Hello, everyone. Please try to take your seat. Thanks. OK. Um, so hi, uh, I'm Yuval Goldberg. I'm from Starkware. I'm a developer at uh, the compilers team. Uh, so we develop Cairo 1, which you might have heard of. Uh, and I'm going to talk about this in this talk and um, give you a bit of a taste of it. But first, OK, it works. Uh, let me introduce my dog. Uh, so this is my dog. His name is Skippy. He deserves it, guys. <laughs> uh, as you can see, Skippy like the peanut butter. Uh, as you can see, he's light brown, he's one year old, and he likes to eat stuff. But his favorite snack is ice. Uh, this is on his first birthday when we cooked him an ice cake, uh, so he's eating ice here. Um, and I know, I know you might have think that I uh, told you more about my dog than about myself, and this is not important, but it is, trust me. Okay, uh, so this is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so a little bit of about what Cairo 1 is uh, and why, then how it looks like, um, a bit about starting contracts, and uh, what we are expecting in the soon future. OK, so Cairo 1 is a high-level Turing complete language for creating start pro stark provable code. Uh, if it doesn't mean a lot to you, that's OK. Um, you can check it later. Uh, it's very similar to what we have in Cairo 0. Um, but it adds some more features over Cairo 0. Um, and it might look prettier and more talented. Um, so more, one more thing to, uh, you need to know about Cairo 1 is that it's open source. Uh, so you're welcome to see it on GitHub. Uh, you can read the code, discuss, contribute. Uh, this is welcome, and we expect your contributions. Um, and there's a lot more in the roadmap. Uh, so we are excited about what, what's coming up. And again, I'll, I'll mention part of it uh, soon in this talk. OK, so why Cairo 0? Uh, one, sorry. Uh, so we have our purpose. The purpose is to create stark provable code. And for this, we, have, we already have Chasm. So if you know Cairo 0, uh, Cairo 0 is built on top of Chasm. Chasm is Cairo assembly. So this is the set of instructions uh, that are directly transla translatable to bytecode or our error. Uh, and programs that are written in Chasm can be proven. Uh, so we start with this, and we build on top of this, and we want to add two important features uh, to create star Cairo 1. Uh, so one is safety, and the second is ergonomics. And by safety, I mean uh, that even runs that fail are, can be proven. Um, I know it's not very detailed, and if you didn't understand, that's OK. Um, but later with, in Shachos talk, he'll, he'll mention it in much more detail, so be sure to be there. And we achieve this safety feature using the Sierra layer that we add. So Sierra is an important building block that we added in Cairo 1. Uh, and it's an intermediate language uh, that compiles to Chasm. Um, and it has the feature that every program written in Sierra will for sure compile to a Chasm code that cannot fail. Or again, putting otherwise, uh, even failed runs can be proven. Uh, and this is, again, an important thing, uh, and more details in Shachos talk. Uh, and on top of this, we add the Cairo 1 layer. Uh, so Cairo 1 is a high-level language uh, that is compiled to Sierra. And this adds our ergonomics that we want. So now we have uh, two compilers, from Cairo 1 to Sierra, and from Sierra uh, to Chasm. So we have... Um, ergonomics and safety, and the same purpose that we have. Um, the ergonomics are very similar to Rust. So if you know Rust, uh, the Cairo code may look very similar to you. Uh, and the purpose, as I said, is Cairo 0, but provable uh, failures. OK. Um, so as you can see, you said I have laser here. OK, it doesn't work. Anyway, as you can see, we have many uh, features. This code may look very similar to you if you know Rust. Um, we have uses, we have constants, we have types like colors, uh, like sorry, like enums and structs, 
uh, we have comments, we have functions, um, like this eat ice function, uh, and the return type, literals, um, tail expressions, everything is an expression like this match expression, um, variables, and so on. Uh, so the basic syntax is very similar to Rust. Um, traits and impulse. So we have traits. Um, trait is, if you know Rust, uh, it's similar to Rust. If not, then it's very similar to interfaces in other languages. Um, and we have uh, here the ice eater trait with the generic type T. Um, and we have this struct dog and an implementation of this trait uh, ice eater. So um, we have and with with the generic type dog. So this is somewhat similar to Rust's uh, implementation for uh, of sorry of ice eater for struct dog. Um, and if you can see here, we implement the same function. Uh, what 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 is achieved by this is in compared to what we have in Rust is that it's much more flexible. So we can define, for example, this eat ice function with self of type t, but we can define another function, for example, with a different uh, self, with a, a different type for self, or we can even define a function without self at all. Um, and it also can achieve the same thing that is implemented in Rust uh, if we do something similar to this. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, the dot operator, which we can use, like here, skip it out, eat ice. Uh, one more important feature is that we can implement traits everywhere, uh, so uh, not necessarily near in the same file of the trait or the struct that we, the relevant struct, uh, but everywhere in our code that is accessible from uh, this implementation. Uh, one more important thing is that we have a name, if you noticed, uh, for this implementation, in this case, ice eater dog. Uh, and this lets us refer to this implementation if, for example, we want multiple implementations for the same trait. Uh, this is something, again, that gives us some flexibility. Uh, ref parameters. Um, again, you might know the concept from different languages. Uh, it is a bit different in Cairo uh, because uh, in Cairo, behind the scenes, everything is immutable. So the, the memory is immutable, and we cannot change it. Uh, so what happens here, actually, is not that we change the reference, the, the memory that uh, the call site uh, passed to us, but we actually copy a value into the function and then back out of the function a new result. Uh, so we have uh, one additional input value and one additional output value, uh, and it's important to understand that because it's hidden. So the cost here is hidden, uh, and you need to understand that. Uh, one more thing is that we have we can use refs uh, for both normal parameters, like ice amount here, or for the self parameter uh, that we have. Um, and as you can see in the implementation, uh, we can actually change uh, these parameters, and it will change on the call site. Um, again, in the in the call site, we also we define mutable variables uh, to use for the ref parameters, because otherwise they cannot change, uh, and we enforce the ref keyword in the call site uh, so that it's very much readable that something might change. Uh, the, the only exception is that if we have the self parameter like Skippy here, uh, it doesn't uh, specify ref. OK. Uh, so panics. Again, concept similar from to other languages. In Rust, we have panic. In other, uh, function, in other languages, we have exceptions, for example. Uh, and the idea is that it exits the entry point of the, of the program with the failure. Uh, so this is an example. This is taken from the Colib, Cairo Colib. Uh, and as you can see, we can panic uh, the third line. Uh, in the third line, we panic with, with some data. Uh, and this, for example, is a function built on top of panic that can assert conditions uh, with, and, and panic with the relevant data in case of failure. Implicit parameters. Uh, so implicit parameters are a concept you might know from Cairo Zero. Uh, the idea is that we have some parameters or types that we pass mostly, in a, not mostly, but we pass to many locations in our code. So instead of writing it again and again in every function, we decided we want it implicit. Um, so in Cairo Zero, it looks a bit like this. 
Uh, so we actually define the implicit parameter in uh, the definition of the, of the function. And this makes it a bit of somewhat half implicit, not completely implicit. And also on the call side, most of the times we don't, uh, we don't specify it, but sometimes we need to somehow uh, specify. And then uh, it becomes not completely implicit. And what we, what we did in Cairo 1 is to actually do it completely implicit. Uh, so uh, the same hash2 function here doesn't specify anything about the hash built-in that we use, which is the implicit parameter. Uh, and the on the only the fact that the, the first function here, use hash built-in, uses this built-in, tells the compiler that this function, hash2, also uses the built-in. So everything is computed automatically for you by the, by the compiler. Um, one more thing to note again is that this is very similar to ref parameters. So the value is copied into the function and then back outside. Um, and this, there is a hidden cost that you need to notice here as well. Uh, the same thing happens with panic. So for example, if validate can panic, for example, uh, then uh, hash2 also can panic and the compiler knows it automatically. OK, named arguments. Uh, again, concept that you might know. Uh, we also decided to use it in uh, function calls. Uh, so for example, we have the add function here uh, with many parameters. And imagine that this function is defined in a different file so you don't see it in your eyes. Um, and now we have the foo function that calls it. So the first line uh, doesn't use name named arguments. And it's very clear that it's not clear uh, what, sh what each argument means, so what, what this call means. Uh, but with the, with the named parameters, named arguments, sorry, uh, you can uh, much more easily understand what's going on. Uh, and these are the different forms of named arguments that we have. We, 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 let, we uh, allow every combination that you want of named and unnamed arguments, so you can choose for each argument if you want to name it or not. Uh, the only thing that needs to be retained is the order of the parameters. So for example, here three is unnamed, but then the rest are named. And as you can see, the last uh, argument is uh, a shorthand that we introduced for when the name of the parameter and the name of the value, or the variable that is used as a value, are the same. So we have colon is new, which is equivalent to is new colon is new. OK, a bit about standard contracts. So this is a contract, in, uh, a simple contract in, in uh, StarkNet. Uh, so as you can see, the first line is uh, an attribute contract. Uh, this means that there is a plugin uh, that is not a core, a part of the core of the language, uh, but a, uh, an outside utility that uh, acts on uh, the language. And this module is as a, an item in the language. And the plugin, StarkNet plugin in this case, acts on it to generate uh, the code of your contract. Uh, so in the contract, with these uh, attributes, you can specify uh, the storage that you have with uh, some uh, va uh, values or var variables in it. And you can define uh, functions like events, external, and view functions. You also can uh, use internal functions, which are the same functions, but if you don't specify them as events, external, or view functions, that can be used inside your code. Uh, you have... Uh, also, mappings in storage that you can use. Uh, you can declare a contract API, and you can call another contract uh, similar to what we have here. OK, so a bit about what's uh, coming on soon. Uh, so first, well, I know you've been waiting for it for a long while, or at least some of you, for loops. Um, yes, thanks. Uh, so we are excited about it too. It's coming up in the coming months. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> uh, we also have more things like Cairo Package Manager, SCARB uh, by Software mentioned, that is already exists and can compile contracts, but is going to be improved more. We have the language server uh, that's going to have uh, more improvements and features for you to uh, easily develop in Cairo. Uh, we have, we're going to introduce short circuiting, which means that once you have, if you have a binary expression and you, once you already know the, uh, the definitive answer, you don't 
continue computing the rest of the terms. Uh, we'll have improved compiler errors, uh, support more types in dicts, more features in contracts like extend other contracts or uh, implement ABIs. We have syntactic sugars, efficiency, uh, better ergonomics, visibility, and a lot, a lot more. Uh, so we are excited about the future, and uh, I hope you are too. Um, that's it. I didn't see my timer, so I'm, I don't know how, how much time I have for questions. Two minutes. Four minutes. Y uh, yes. Yes, of course. And do we get, uh, like, uh, I'll just repeat the question because I'm not sure everybody heard. Uh, he asked whether we have uh, if w whether we are going to have if and else. So of course we are going. To, we have it already. Okay. No. <laughs> In Cairo Zero, we have some uh, strange things we need to do when we have if and else. Uh, this doesn't exist in Cairo 1. Cairo 1 looks exactly like any other high-level language you know. You can write if, else, and everything is uh, handled for you. Yes. Yes, I, I might have skipped, skipped it in the first slide, but it was written there. We also have options results and um, question mark operator. Again, if you know Rust, it may mean a lot to you. If not, maybe not, but these are powerful tools that you can use. More questions? Yes. So will, will there be a simplified layer over dict access? Will, be, will there be a simplified layer over dict access? We wouldn't have dict access. We have dicts. We're going to have dict. I, ah, I mentioned it. We have already dicts. It doesn't support all the types. You don't need dict access as in Cairo 0. Uh, you can use dict again as similar to high level languages, uh, and we are going to support more types uh, for it. So, essentially, everything that might be in a dict should be supported uh, eventually. Yes? Would the for loops use recursion? Yes. The uh, the question was whether for loops are going to be internally uh, recursion, and the answer is yes. And uh, so what's the maximum depth? Uh, maximum, the question was again, what is the maximum depth for the recursion? I don't know. Um, the, the, we, do, we, di we haven't uh, concluded the, this decision yet, but there shouldn't be something very Restrictive. Yes? The question was whether we are going to have default arguments. Uh, we don't have such plans uh, for now, uh, but it is an option. We can. Uh, you might uh, suggest it in, in GitHub or some other uh, discussion for form, and then we can discuss if this is something that we want. Uh, but it's not planned for super soon. Yes? We already have U fifty uh, U two fifty six. The se first consistent like uh, felt. Yeah. One last question, or I don't know how much time. I have. Yes. So do you mean in uh, in the manner like from the view of the user or from the view of our us the developers? Because you know you do something simple but under the hood it can result in something very difficult, right? Yes. I, I think Shaha wants to <laughs> urge us to answer. Things that are invisible or 
Yeah, let me just repeat approximately uh, for anyone to hear and uh, to add my view. Uh, what Shachar said is that we are uh, aiming to add as less as least as possible such uh, things that are hidden, uh, but we do have them in Cairo. Uh, for example, in Sierra, and Shachar will talk about it later, uh, we have we don't have them, so everything uh, is what you see is what you get. Uh, but for for it for it to be a high level language, we needed to uh, hide some costs, and uh, I, I talked about some of them uh, previously. Um, but most of them are not, and yes, because because everything behind the scenes is much more complex, it makes some it, it gives us the, it le it enforces us to choose between some trade-offs uh, and. For it to be a high-level language that is easy to use, we do need to hide some of the stuff. Okay, thank you.